arrived in Manitoulin. Got myself a split rail ale. Cheers, you can kind of see the water there. Um, this is an amber ale. First taste of the island. Salad and beer, they said it couldn't be done. It can be. It's going online this one? Yes. Oh no, no, no. Oh, no why no? You're wasting your time now, this is all fake footage. I'm just gonna use it anyway. <laughs> no, I've got your man run from above. We've arrived in Manitoulin Island. This was the last part of our journey. I know it seems like we've been on a road trip forever. We had such a great time and we arrived here on Manitoulin Island at Kicking Mule Ranch. We fed some ponies already. It was a great day. The whole ranch was themed to be very much like a kind of country and western vibe ranch. It had teepees and yurts and huts and things like that. It was pretty awesome. We weren't actually staying inside this teepee, but our lovely host gave us a tour and so we popped in. No one was there as you can see, but how cool is this? You could literally be sleeping in a tent. Here's Danny doing a little walk around. Doesn't he look glorious in the golden sunshine? He's such a golden sunshine man. He's looking pretty serious though. I wonder what's on his mind. Still looking very, oh, hello, it's me. <laughs> Here I am reading my book while Danny does some filming. Isn't he a good sport? I think I'm also having a beer. Good days. So you've seen the yurt where we weren't staying, but this is where we actually were staying, the blacksmith shop Bunky. Danny found this listed on Airbnb. Hello, there I am being cheeky. I loved this double part opening door. I loved it so much that I wanted to film myself opening it. And Danny found it and it was really, really cool. Here is an actual tour of the space. This is the, it was just one room. As you can see, it's very heavy on the horse theme. Um, it was small and cozy. There was a heater in there in case it got cold, but honestly it was the summer, so there was no need. There was a lot of attention to detail. As you can see there, the horseshoe light. Again, just absolutely loving those doors. So much so that I artfully filmed myself opening and closing it twice. <laughs> Each spot came with a fire pit, and as you can see, Danny here is building an absolute roarer of a fire using the house technique. There are a few techniques, but we seem to get this one down. It was honestly a really great night sitting around the fire and having a drink. My shoe might have caught fire. Yep, it did, just a little bit, an ember on the shoe. We roasted marshmallows and we had a great chat. I also found out that night that one of my friends had just had a baby, so we were having a bit of a heart to heart. It was great. Hello to my breakfast. I was making some kind of elevated scrambled egg situation for Danny and I, filming myself cracking that egg. And we got some really nice local produce, a bit of feta cheese in there for an elevated experience. Some basil, it was a great way to start the day. Good morning from the car on another jerky road. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna have to intersperse so much still footage. Oh, she's got some thoughts, returning right. Ah. Oh, the lake! Oh my goodness, I'm so distracted. I might have to start this again. Uh, no, no, it's good. It's good. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. <laughs> we're, as we roll down the road, and you're looking at me when you should be looking at the lake straight ahead. But hi, we're on Manitoulin Island. Yesterday was glorious. We had a really nice lunch. Sorry. <laughs> um, and the ranch. We're staying. Lunch and run. Right, ranch. Lunch. Ranch. Lunch. Ranch. Ranch. Lunch. Ranch. Ranch. Lunch. Doesn't work, does it? We had a lovely lunch. Now we're staying on a lovely ranch and we're going for a lovely hike. Yeah, we're going to a place called um, Bridal Vale Falls. Ontario, 550 yeah. North for seven kilometers. Okay. Which there's a big waterfall. Yeah, and I guess I guess the idea is that it will look like a bride's veil. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. We'll see. Very good, we'll see very good. When we get there. Um, and I won't be wearing my swimming costume in the falls because like I told you, my bum has been savaged by mosquitoes. Danny's driving, so he's not gonna have a beer, but there's a brewery on the island, and I love breweries so much that he's agreed to come with me anyway. What a hero. I haven't had a flight since March, and for people that know me in real life, I usually, I mean, I aspire to have a flight of day. This is a pretty long intro, mate. Yeah, thanks, bye. <laughs> he's 
got a camera slung on his back. Look at the lake! <laughs> Every piece of footage they're getting from me is me just being like, la la la. <laughs> The trail featured some really great artwork from a local artist. It was kind of a nature meets modernity type vibe. I did film the description so we could learn a little bit more about it. Feel free to pause and read it. There's me sitting and engaging with the art, which was allowed. I wasn't being very disrespectful. We were encouraged to do so. The trail was honestly actually really peaceful. There weren't very many people on it at all. Danny enjoyed sitting by the water, throwing some stones in. There were some fairy houses too, which were very cute. Had a very fairy tale woodland vibe. Also, this was the day that Taylor Swift released Folklore and I was listening to it interspersed throughout the day and it felt all that more magical. There's the falls for you, Bridal Veil vale Falls. Once again, because it looks like a bride's veil. I love this shot. Being around the water was so peaceful. We did get just a little bit wet and Danny's beard got wet, so. Our next stop onwards from Bridal Veil vale Falls was Gore Bay. Manitoulin Island's pretty big, so there are lots of different parts. And this was really nice and boaty. Lots of great boats around. We stopped for lunch here. We ordered a pizza from a little shack. It was really, really great. Um, we had a veggie pizza and I had a Greek salad. And we did a little bit of sharing. Um, obviously, because of COVID, you couldn't go inside at this point. So we ordered it from the hatch and found somewhere along the bay to sit and enjoy our lovely lunch. We found a swing actually, which is better than eating inside, I think, because we swung, we ate, what can I say? You know lunch is my favourite part of the day and it was beautiful views, lovely flags. Lunch on a swing bench. Bees! Boats, bubbles. <laughs> After lunch, we had a short walk to Split Rail Brewing Company where I ordered a flight. I actually ordered two, one for me and one for Danny, but he only had a tiny bit of his and I drank both of them because I love beer. Most of them were quite hoppy and American pale ale-y. I loved them, it was a great day. We then took a walk down the pier and watched boats as they came by. I love how in Canada, we have Canadian flags on boats. I know probably most countries do that too, but I don't know, it's just nice to see me and my hat just living our best lives that day. Having a little walk along the Providence Bay boardwalk. I think it's very beautiful behind me, lake. Behind me this way, foresty goods. In front of me there's a Danny who is declaring he's used up all his energy, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah. I require food now. You, you just have an ice cream. No, that's not real food. One of the crazy things about being at the beach in Canada is that you think that you're seeing the actual ocean, but this is lake. This was part of Lake Huron, one of the five great lakes of North America. And again, it really felt like the seaside to me. It was a really, really, really beautiful day by the sand. I wish we had longer hair. This was our last night on Manitoulin Island and our last night at the Kicking Mule Ranch. We decided to use the wood burner at our own little bunkie that evening. 
As you can see, Danny has made another lovely roaring fire. Bit of a different technique in, I think my mum would call this a chimney. Not just my mum, I think that's just the name of it, but I think I've only ever heard my mum say chimney. Anyway, look at that roaring flame. It's the last full day of our trip and we're still on Manitoulin Island and we're about to do a hike and Danny is reading the map. Any luck, my love? Yeah, I think it's this way actually. This way? Yeah, not sure it is. Okay, so we're gonna go off on what is called the Cup and Saucer Trail. Um, apparently some nice vistas, Ruth and Paul said. Yeah, it looks like there's a really, really big flat bit that you can sit on at the top. Um, it looks pretty, it looks pretty daunting from the pictures oh, yeah? that I've seen, but it might be one of those, you know those sort of like optical illusions where it looks like someone's sitting on the edge of a cliff, but really they're not. Yes. I'm not sure it would be a bit like that. Okay, so well. We're see either way. We're good hikers, aren't we? So off we go. And I'd also like to thank this hat for coming with me on pretty much all of my summer adventures. Thank you, hat. Thank you, hat. I love most about the Cup and Saucer Trail was that it was very varied. There were parts that were kind of flat trail, there were parts that were uphill, there were these cool little staircases every now and then, which were really fun to climb and felt again very fantastical and fairy taley and a bit Lord of the Ringsy, I'm gonna come out there and say it. Also, I really loved that we went through woodland here because that was very different to the view that we got at the end. So it really felt like quite a diverse journey. Also, there were climbing parts, which felt very good for me. It wasn't just straight up walking. We were really using quite a lot of muscles in our bodies. And I like that. Personally, I absolutely love any kind of adventure. I don't know if you know this, but I try and get 10,000 steps a day, um, but it's so much better to do it in a cool environment like this, right? This was the view around half of the way up the trail. Um, and as you can see, it's really starting to emerge. Danny and I stopped a few times to really take it in. <laughs> Finally, we reached the top and the views, well, they speak for themselves, don't they? They came into view and we could see across a lot of the island. I'm so lucky that we climbed this on such a clear day because we could see around us for miles. I loved it. Danny was getting a little bit nervous when I walked out to the front, sort of near, I guess, the saucer. That's why it's called the Cup and Saucer Trail. Um, he was pretty brave and stood near the edge, but every time I sort of jumped up and down or, yep, there's me doing it, he was getting a bit nervous, which is kind of understandable. I was probably being a little bit too crazy. These views really were a fantastic end to what was a fantastic trip. <laughs> <laughs>